the other night, my wife declared that she was feeling very tired and she was going to bed. I looked at my watch and it was just after eight o'clock. So I told her, it's just after eight o'clock. She was feeling tired and she went to bed anyway. Well, the next morning, shortly after she woke up uh, and had made breakfast, she said, I don't understand it. I slept the entire night and I'm still absolutely exhausted. And I had a light bulb moment. And I said to her, it's a situation in Israel. The anxiety, the stress, and the fear, which you, me, or any of you watching this might not be aware of, it takes its toll. Well, she's not the only person who's been telling me recently that they're tired, or they can't sleep, or they can't or don't want to get out of bed. As the Talmud says in many places, call Yisrael a raven zevazeh, the entire Jewish people are part of each other. We're all affected by what's happening just now. Another symptom I've noticed is the number of couples have been calling me and asking if they can come uh, urgently for counselling. One couple phoned six times in one day. And the funny thing is that when they come, it's often over trivial things. Um, one couple, who, that couple I was telling you about, who phoned six times and I eventually said, yes, come along. Uh, they were arguing about things that happened many years before. Uh, you know, I, I remember when my late wife was towards the end of her, of her life um, and people would ask me how I'm doing and I would say, you know, fine. But then something would happen, something small, something irrelevant. And I would say, explode. And that's when I realized even though I thought I was doing okay, I wasn't really doing okay at all. And at this moment in time, we're all stressed. And it shows itself and it manifests itself in many different ways. But if we weren't stressed, I suppose, we wouldn't be cloud and throw, a raven, each one a part of each one. When I lived in England um, for 26 years in Manchester, there were many outstandingly special Jews that I met and admired. And one of them was somebody called Rabbi Gavriel Brody, and he was the rabbi of a shul there called Steenkort Shul. As a young man, he managed to escape from Czechoslovakia just before the Nazis gobbled it up. He found a home in Manchester and a father, a replacement father, in its Rosh Hashiva and Moshe Yitzchak Siegel, the in 1944, he became the the rov of the great and new synagogue, which was going to become a growing to something called Steen Court Synagogue. And under his gentle and wise hand, the synagogue and the Kehila grew from being, well, grew and transformed from being a traditional Anglo-Jewish, an English traditional synagogue, to one that was solidly Shamar, Torah, and this was a much more committed congregation who took their Torah very seriously. And where, in my time, I'm sure they still are exceptional. I recall making a radio making a radio program for the BBC, and I do apologize for using that, that name, in which I interviewed Rabbi Brody. Now he'd only recently returned from visiting his his dying sister in Yerushalayim. And it was when he was visiting her there that he learned at her bedside, at her deathbed, what had happened to their parents. And his whole life, now he was an old man with white hair, um, he didn't know until that moment what happened. Well, they'd been deported to Auschwitz. When it came to the Selectia, the designation of or the decision which were going to be gassed straight away and who were going to be giving a little bit more life for a while, then his mother apparently was much younger than his father. So his older father, and the father's mother, Rabbi Brody's grandmother, were selected to go to the left. That's the ones who were going to be gassed. But his mother, being a younger woman, was set to the right so she could anticipate some continuation of life. But when she looked across, and when she saw her husband and her mother-in-law, 
walking to what she already understood was their deaths. She couldn't stand that sight and she, she walked over to help them, to walk beside them, to help them make that last dreadful journey to the gas chambers. Um, Rabbi Brody told me that very often when married couples came to him over some issue, business partners or a feuding family members, and they asked him to arbitrate a conflict that had arisen between them, then he used to listen very carefully and very sympathetically to both sides. And then he said, I remember him saying, and I'd just say to them one word, Holocaust. Holocaust. And with that single word, of course, what he was trying to tell them was, don't forget what just happened to us just a few decades before, what the Nazis tried to do to us. In the big scheme of things, is this really worth falling out over or cannot a compromise be made? So when the scale and the barbarity, the evil of what the Islamo-Nazis of Hamas did and had done became apparent, the front page of one of England's biggest newspapers, can't remember which one, declared just one word in huge black letters, banner headline, Holocaust. It was a holocaust, it was a pogrom. A message on someone's uh, social media page, Facebook page, I think it was, uh, referred to the 1400 people who were murdered, and incidentally, don't forget the thousands who were seriously wounded. Uh, the 1400, and they referred to them this way, it was the 6,000,000, It was very chilling. Now in times of anxiety and fear such as these, we must try to be understanding with each other and understanding with ourselves. We might find ourselves quick tempered and struggling to shrug things off and laugh about them. Our minds are elsewhere at the moment. And of course we don't feel like laughing at anything. Of course we don't. If we do, did, we wouldn't be clown the strong or even zebazé. And if we can extend our sympathy to ourselves and our understanding that maybe we're not doing so well and maybe we're flying off the handle untypically, then it's also, I think, a moment to, to wonder how we can be mechazic, how we can strengthen ourselves. There's a very, very sweet young lady uh, who came to see me a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's in one of the, the schools I teach in and she's scared. She's, she's very scared of what's going on just now. Um, I gave her a coffee of my translation of Shar Habitokhan. It was called Refuse to Leave. And she, she devoured it. I think she read it in two days. But she's still scared. She's still a young lady. And she came again today to, to tell me she's scared. Well, of course she's scared. We're all scared. Uh, that one word, the Holocaust, on that, head paper, in that uh, newspaper headline, is very accurate. Uh, so I want to tell you something, all of you watching this, that I said, I've been saying in my shearing uh, this recently, if you've been, those of you who watch my weekly shear or, or the shearing that are posted there and Tara anytime or on my YouTube channel, you probably heard me say this. Uh, and I was quite pleased with this idea because I thought, I thought it was my discovery um, and I discovered it wasn't. But it's, it was an idea I was very, very pleased with. And, and thinking about the situation we're in just now, I think this discovery of mine, which turned out not to be mine, um, is so important for us to bear in mind. Uh, for those of you who hang in with my share, you'll, you'll know this. The question went like this. In the Seder, um, we say three times a day, Moidim anach loch. We give thanks to Hashem Shatahu, Hashem and the King of the Kiev all of it, we give thanks to you, the, our God and God of our fathers, and all, forever always have been. Surachain, you are the rock of our lives, Mogin Yishani, the shield that saves us. Throughout the generations, we, we sing your praises. For the lives, the lives that you've given into our hands, because it's like the souls you've given to us. For the miracles that are with us every day. Now, what miracle was with you today? Now, when I, when I was saying this show recently, um, I asked people, what miracle happened to you today? Or maybe yesterday, 
for last week. So there's always somebody who puts out their hand, very sincere and very frum, and very pious, and says, I, I woke up this morning, I was breathing, blood was coursing through my veins. No, that's all true, of course. But you see, that's covered because I've already said before, uh, we think you're praised, the fact you've given us life. Um, so it can't be talking about that stuff and normal life, the fact we're breathing, the fact blood courses through our veins. That's already been covered. And, and our soul that you've given us. But on these seconds from calling on one after the miracles are happening to us every day, well, that must be miracle miracles. But that doesn't make any sense. Because miracles, big miracles, open miracles don't happen to us every day. So here was my, what I thought was my discovery. I think there's a comma missing there. And it should read, but on secha, comma, shem ko yamimono. And from the miracles that are with us every day, what miracles? And here I find in the, this is the Cedar of the Vilna Gone, that there at the bottom it says exactly what I've been saying. Let me read a little bit to you. It says on the second to the second we call ace the miracles that happen to us all the time. Mitzvah says the zacher has the a has the chasad of his baruch. It's a mitzvah to say a positive mitzvah to remember all the chasadim that Hashem has ever done for us. Well, it's born in and consider them, think hard about them, and that you can find in Devorim. In Devorim, if you're interested, it's chapter Ches and in Pesach base and uh, through to He. But Zachata is called Hadera Chasher Halicha Hashem Elokecho Ze Arboim Shana Bamidbar. And remember all the things that Hashem did for you over the forty years that you were in the desert, and you walked there, and you didn't have to worry about food, and you didn't have to worry about clothing. You lived in a miraculous uh, environment for those forty years. I'm cutting it a bit short. And then he says, if that's the sort of miracles that it's a mitzvah to remember all the time, Koshkin, how much more so? She called Echen Misra, every Jew is Chayab Lazak or Hasodim Shaisa Tomid in Klaal Misra. Of all the miracles that through history Hashem has done to the Jewish people, he saved us from our enemies, the lions who wanted to devour us from the Christian world, from the Muslim world. On the Tomid, like I said, are waiting to devour us. But King Chayev called Odin Lazak or Hachsodim, and every Jew he or she is, is is obligated to remember all the kindness and all the miracles. Should God not show His Baruch Me Yom Halod that Hashem has done for you and for me during the course of our lifetime? The Yechna Lefana the Yavash the Yasha B'Tshuva Shleima, which allows us to reconnect and reestablish and and reaffirm um, reaffirm our relationship with Hashem His Baruch. And that's a message I'd like to give to that girl who's scared. It's a message I'd like to remind myself of and, and maybe share with you as well. Remember who we are. Remember your own life and all the astonishing things. In my life, I, I've been in a plane crash. I've been in a car crash where the car was wiped out. I've been bitten by a lion. It's in my first book. And I know you're not going to believe me, but that's true. And so many others. Examine your own life. I promise you you'll find a miracle or two hiding there. You're supposed to keep them bechol yun, but on the seichel and for the miracles, should be yun. The miracles that happened to me, the lion, the, 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 the car crash, the, the plane crash, and, and so many others, I've got to keep them with me all the time. And so do you. The, and remember all the miracles that Hashem did for us in the, when they took us out from Egypt and, 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 and Hanukkah and Purim and, and all the way through Jewish history. It reminds that Hashem has always been there for us. And we faced things like this before. Little Holocaust, big Holocaust. We've got to remember we are clown Yisrael. Think about the miracles that Hashem has done all the way through our history, all the way through your life. Have that in your mind. It reminds you that Hashem has never let us go. He's constantly supervising. And then from that, there was, of course, a time when the Jewish people were faced with a terrifying army chasing that, bearing down on them, Egypt at the, at the Amsuf. And the Jewish people said to Moshe, Moshe, pray for us. And he did. And Shem says, this is not a time to pray. It's time to act. Tell them to do something. In this case, it was to go into the, into the, into the sea. And, and that would cause it to split. That would provoke the miracle. I think particularly at this time, reminding yourself of what Hashem, that Hashem's always there, what he's done for us so far, there's also at the point 
worth bearing in mind to remind ourselves that it's a time to do as well. The chesed that Claude Schott is famous for, we've got to go up a gear in that. The achdus, which is so essential for Claude Schott, we've got to go up a gear, a gear for that. There's somebody, maybe I shouldn't tell you this, there's somebody I, I, I believe owed me over $60,000. And I, I wrote to him recently and I said to him, I'm scrubbing it, scrubbing the debt. Do I have to halachically? Absolutely not. Is it the right thing to do halachically? Maybe yes, maybe no. Is it the right thing to do when the Jewish people are in trouble and we need to be have in mind called Israel the Raven Zebazah? I think so. So anything we can do to build our connections with other Jews, because after all, we are standing alone again. Anything we can do to help other Jews, at the same time, constantly having in mind everything Hashem's done for us, I think that'll help us feel good, us feel strong, and not so afraid, and be able to get through this, to see what we've seen so many times in our history before, miracle after miracle, Hashem fighting for Claude strong. I hope that's helped, um, and I hope, and as I'm sure you do as well, we hear good news, great news, great miracles, very, very soon. I'm Israel Khan.